Hello and welcome, and in today's video, I'm going to share with you the top 10 most nostalgic art creatures in my opinion. So let's get into it. In at number 10 is the Thyla, and albeit this is one of the more later creatures added to Ark as when the island first released, the Redwoods biome didn't exist, it is still a very influential creature, which when it came out it was an absolute beast and it still is a beast to this day, but at the time it was definitely valued higher as nowadays there are some other creatures which somewhat do a similar job to the Thyla, but the Thyla is still an extremely useful creature capable of so many things and obviously when it came out this was just such a memorable creature as it wasn't like any other but obviously the fact that it didn't come with the game when the game first launched kind of deducts its place a bit which is why it's in at number 10. If this thing was in the game since the start though I think it would be a lot higher on the list and pretty much all of these creatures I think all of these creatures are spawning on the island and were in those original year kind of two years of arc before Scorched Earth released obviously. In terms of these Thyla's actual uses though instead of me just talking about how nostalgic it was back then this is a really great traveling mount as it can scale loads of walls it's not the best in asa at the moment as the terrain is really really buggy compared to in asc like there's just loads of really complex geometry and it doesn't really form well and the thyla doesn't bode well with it but for normal arc this thing is actually really great at traversing things like obviously mountains and any kind of terrain but it is still really good in asa as well and also they do deal that bleed ability which is obviously an extremely useful thing which every arc carnivore should have in order to kind of be a good carnivore really especially a carnivore of this size yes the rex doesn't have the bleed ability but it is still one of the most useful abilities you can have on any arc creature being a herbivore on a carnivore but you'll probably find it more on carnivores and herbivores and i think the stego is the only creature out there which has the bleed ability obviously apart from the carnivores now next up we have the castoroides and you may ask why is this thing higher than the thyla the casto is a significantly worse creature than the thyla but actually when the casto launched this was one of my favorite arc tames and it still is a pretty memorable one for me to this day the castoroides is by far the best gatherer of wood in terms of a creature that can gather wood obviously it doesn't really compare to the chainsaw but the chainsaw is unlocked much later in the game and the castoroides is a literal creature which can gather wood and it is a lot more fun to gather wood on a castoroides than using a chainsaw and they're pretty good swimmers as well. They'll pack a punch as well, they actually deal a very, very nice, neat amount of damage and their saddle works as a portable smithy which really wasn't much of a thing back then in those early stages of ARC. Apart from I think the RG having that ability as well, unless they got added later, but I'm pretty sure it did have that from launch, which is obviously a really nice feature to have. And considering the Castoroides was in one of the earlier updates that came to Ark, it wasn't in the original game, this was a really cool creature which deserves to be in this spot as it has a use which no other Ark creature really has, and it was a really cool update which every Ark player at the time really appreciated. But just before we continue, make sure to hit that like and subscribe as it really helps me out. Now yes, this is another later creature as well, but the Baryonyx is still an extremely influential Arctame, which I think is one of the more useful ones, and when it got added, it was such a game changer, especially once the caves had been updated as well, as yes, the caves did get updated, if you didn't know that, from the ones which were originally in the game, they were just kind of the geometry changed around a bit, I think, and some more creatures were added, either way, the caves did get significantly harder and a creature like this was really really welcome when the swamp and redwoods biomes were introduced so it's similar time frame to when the thyla came out but in my opinion this was just a much more useful and cool creature to me than the thyla and it is so much more nostalgic in my thoughts about it the barry is just such a nice creature which i always really really enjoy using and it is just it's just one of those creatures that they always have to come back to. And yes, many people nowadays do use shadow mains for cave runs, 
But the Baryonyx is really just, it's just one of those tames that I, I have to use instead of the Shadow Mane for doing cave runs. Especially on ASA because the Shadow Mane isn't here yet. And it has a secret ability as well which you might have just seen then. If you do right click on your keyboard it will do a spin attack which will stun creatures up to the size of a Megalodon. Making this thing actually really great for underwater caves too. Definitely a great arc tame. In at number 7 is the RG. And it is no doubt that the RG is one of the most useful creatures in arc out there. There's pretty much no other arc creature which does the job which the RG does unless it's like one of the newer ones. But those newer ones didn't even exist at the time when the RG came out. And obviously the RG saddle is a portable smithy as well which is such a nice ability to have. And back then that was an even nicer ability to have. It was just a really really cool thing. It did just seem to be that every new update to arc was just the coolest thing ever and now the community it seems a little bit dead but obviously when you look back on things you kind of forget all the bad stuff so it is very very nostalgic when it comes to this as this was definitely one of the good art creatures which obviously deserves to still be in the game obviously our wild card is not going to remove any of the creatures from the game but it is definitely going to be all the way right through into arc 2 and the fact they could pick up many other creatures as well was really useful and a really cool thing as well as not only could you just pick up your friends like you could on the pteranodon but you can also pick up loads of other creatures as well and that was just a really nice ability to have and i think it's regen added later but also its original model design is so nostalgic now sorry i say this is sacrilegious but next up is the Tyranodon, yes, higher than the RG. And the main reason for this isn't because the Tyranodon is a better creature, and the better creatures aren't always the most nostalgic, but the Tyranodon was probably everyone's first experience of flight in Ark, which is such a joy and such a different experience. The game completely changes after you've got yourself a Tyranodon. It is the biggest jump that you will ever face in arc oh there's a big carnivore on the ground well now you can just simply fly over it the game becomes so much easier and in some ways a lot more pleasant and at this point you're kind of over the general learning curve of arc and it is a real sign of great progress and achievement once you change yourself a pteranodon and you've got the saddle for it which back then was an absolute pain as no one really tweaked their rates back in 2015 and 2016 so it took ages it took me about an hour and a half i think to gather all the chitin and keratin required to get that thing i just killed so so many carbs over and over and over again but i was so happy once i got that saddle and also relating back to squid's old arc series which you may have watched the pteranodon which he first tamed is that's another really nostalgic moment for me and he named it flappy dave and because of that i named my first pteranodon flappy dave and i still name pteranodons to this day flappy dave and obviously the pteranodon hasn't really experienced any model changes at least i don't think it has unlike the rg which has a significant model update from the original even though the original is more nostalgic but the new rg model is definitely better the Tyranodon is just such a nostalgic creature for me, which is every art player's kind of first experience of flight, definitely then back in the day, which is a creature which is just nostalgic to everyone really. In at number 5 is the Stego. And the reason why the Stego was so, so nostalgic for me was partly because this was my first kind of big tame which i ventured out on it took me two whole hours once knocked out to tame the stego and a subsequent probably half an hour to 20 minutes to actually knock out that stego as i didn't use anything like traps back then it was just you just shoot at it and you run away and you just keep trying and i probably failed a couple of times as well but it was also a really really low level as high levels you didn't really care about that back then it was just so so chill and you didn't really have to deal with anything and the fact that this was my first kind of big tame in arc the stego still to this day really does mean a lot to me nostalgically and it's just a creature which i always really enjoy taming now even though it is barely any effort at all it's just very 
very, very simple to tame. But the fact that this was like my biggest challenge in Ark at the time, it's so fun to look back on all of the progress which I have made in Ark. And it's just such a revolutionary Ark creature, which no other creature really compares to. And after the DLC as well, it just gave even more life to this creature, which I really love. And I'm sure many other Ark players out there really really love and enjoy as well and that is why the stego is probably the most nostalgic herbivore in my opinion it is just it's so nice in every way it's just designed so well and it's low stamina and albeit slightly iffy weight once you've been gathering berries for a bit actually makes this thing even cooler to me as i remember all of those struggles from back in the day in at number four is tiny tim if you got the reference comment down below the youtuber which started that name off for the giga and obviously when the giga was first released into arc which i think was 2016 in an update around the kind of autumn season in arc as they were kind of there were seasons in arc back then i remember there kind of being an autumn season all the trees were a different color at that point it's actually it's a nice thing that Ark had the back then, but obviously they don't have that now. Obviously they have events, but it's it's not like what it was back then. There's not really an, an autumn event. I would like to see that back, but there's probably... That's not going to return, is it? In terms of Tiny Tim, though, because I'm not going to call it the Giga. I'm going to call it Tiny Tim for nostalgia reasons. When this creature was first introduced into Ark, it was the biggest strongest most powerful creature any arc player had seen and every single player or multiplayer arc player did once to tame this thing and oh gosh how many times did i say player in that sentence the giga was just so powerful and so cool its rage meter was a really cool ability as well as it was seen as so powerful you couldn't keep it under control and all of the lore around this creature was just so so cool as we'd seemingly been stuck with the rex for a while obviously that's not a bad thing but it was really nice to have that refresh and that immense power which came from the mighty tiny tim in at number three is the raptor and the raptor was kind of my first experience with a carnivore in arc all the way back then and i think that was before the raptor pouncing was added to the game i'm not actually sure when that was added but either way it doesn't exist now and the raptors in asa do attack a lot faster than asc but we are talking more or less asc raptors here instead of asa raptors and the raptor is really a nostalgic creature to me because this was like my first carnivore experience like i said this is kind of the first carnivore which i got into obviously there were like dilos and things like that but you know who wants a dilo you can't you can't ride the dilo and getting up to the saddle level for this thing actually was a bit of a challenge as back then no one really fiddled around with the rates and i definitely didn't fiddle around with the rates so i was just playing on like default server official rates as I'm pretty sure I didn't even have like single player settings enabled. It was it was really low rates. The rates were low and also the UI was very different. Actually a very nostalgic UI which I'm kind of sad they got rid of for Survivor of the Fittest with the update. Because that was kind of my only, like, my only last experience with that UI which now I can't experience anymore. But that is another nostalgic thing obviously the Arc UI. And the Raptor is definitely a nostalgic tame. Again it's like your first carnivore which you can ride and really get into and it just it seems so powerful at the time even though when you kind of level it up to creatures like carnos it didn't really seem as great anymore but considering it was my first carnivore experience in arc that first raptor tame of mine is still one of the fondest memories i have in arc even though i'm pretty sure like 10 15 minutes after i tamed it i managed to get it killed with like a rex or a carno or something like that Either way, yeah, the Raptor is a really nostalgic tame and actually, still to this day, a really great first carnivore if you're looking to tame one. In at number two is the Rex. And there is no doubt that the Rex is probably the most influential arc tame out there. There's just no other arc creature which really compares to the Rex, in my opinion, in terms of its sheer power and also its status in arc. Yes, the Giga and the Carcodontosaurus is a more powerful Giga, but the Carcodontosaurus is too recent to count as nostalgic, and the Giga was a little bit later on. But when Ark first came out, and when you really started digging into it, the Rex was just the most powerful thing about. And facing the Broodmother with some Rexes was some of the most fun that you could have in Ark. 
especially considering there wasn't a boss arena at the time and you could really experiment around. Obviously, I do prefer having the boss arenas there, but not having the boss arenas there did allow some extra experimentation and especially considering in the early stages of Ark, the Broodmother was tameable as well. It was a really nice, cool thing, which I'm kind of sad isn't tameable anymore as there are definitely some stronger creatures on Ark than the Broodmother. Maybe it might be a little bit too OP now, and actually there probably isn't anything stronger than the Broodmother at the moment. But it was a really cool feature, which I'm actually really sad that they removed, and I'm pretty sure it was a bug which Wildcard didn't intend to happen, which is why it had been removed, and that was a really nostalgic thing as well. But in terms of the Rex as well, this creature was just so powerful and so buff, and taming your first Rex was just one of the coolest things that you could do in Ark. Just nothing, nothing at all compared to the sheer power that you experienced when riding a Rex for the first time. And plus, like the Giga, you got achievements for riding it, which was a really nice touch, which really did add something extra special to this creature. And finally, in at number one is the Kano. And some of you may be really, really disagreeing with me there. But I really want you to hear this out. The Kano is one of my favourite, if not my favourite, Arc Dino out there. And it is so, so nostalgic to me. Especially when looking back on Squid's old Arc series, when he tamed a Kano called Kano Dave. Which he didn't even tame on camera, but it was just such a really crucial and nice part of that series. That when I tamed my first Kano for the first time, I was so so excited to have one and to this day i'm still really excited to tame kanos and when i start arc my first objective is tame a kano and yes there are much much better creatures out there you could say the aloe is significantly a better option to go for especially at the level when you're taming a kano but the kano is always the creature i will go to first the kano is just so so nostalgic for me for so so many reasons it's basically one of the only art creatures at the time which i really really got excited about and especially because it released with the game as well it was just one of those creatures which you had to tame and especially considering squid at the time tamed one and called it carney dave i had to call my first one carney dave as well and that obviously led with my nostalgia for the carno and the carno is just such a great tame which i think nowadays is underappreciated and especially considering it has more abilities now than back then, the Kano is just a really great creature, which has a wealth of abilities. It has great mobility, it deals the bleed ability, it deals enough damage, and it has enough health to keep me happy. The Kano is absolutely amazing. But anyway, that is the end of today's video, and I want to know down below, what is it your most nostalgic arc tame, and what are your top 10 most nostalgic arc tames? And I'll see you all later.